Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Naomi and today I will be explaining to all new members how to take off. Uh, you have been watching our videos on the slides that we had done on PowerPoints and you don't really understand what really this taking off entails. So uh, in our video today, it is for that student who has never been to a taking off class or has been even to a taking off class but has not been understanding what really we are doing. All right, so uh, why do we take off? Let's, let's start there. Why do we do taking off? It's because taking off is the first process of coming up with a bill of quantities. Taking off, uh, it, in other words, it's called measurement. Eh? It helps you measure every element of a building so with, with enough focus. You focus on an element of a building or even a, a very small thing, for example, concrete in the foundation. Uh, I don't know what you would call strip concrete in the foundation. You focus on it, then you measure it accurately. So, uh, once we measure every part of this building so accurately, then we will come to abstracting, which is the next process, whereby we will summarize, uh, we shall bring all together all the related stuff. For example, we shall bring in the concrete in the foundation together with the concrete in the first floor and the ground floor and the second floor. We shall bring in the walls in the foundation together with the walls on the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor, so that we can get the total area of the walls, so that we can get the total volumes of concrete, so that we can get the total... Anything that is related, we shall get the totals. So, uh... When we are taking off, we go to the details. For example, if it is the substructure, remember substructure is the foundation. Uh -huh. We are starting off the building process. We need to measure everything accurately so that we can be able to price it. After taking off, because taking off, the answers that we shall get are usually some in linear meters, some in square meters, and some in cubic meters. For example, we shall uh, measure, for example, formwork in linear meters for the edges. Uh -huh. We shall measure, uh, for example, site clearance in terms of area. We shall measure concrete, maybe in terms of volume. When we shall come to the bill of quantity, after entering these uh, measurements that we get, the measurements, we shall enter them in the column for the measurement then we shall come up with a rate the unit rate is the is is, is where we come up with the rate for doing a formwork per linear meter the rate for doing how much will it cost us to do site clearance per square meter how much will it cost us to do concrete uh, per cubic meter so we shall multiply the quantity we multiply by the rate then we shall come up with a total once we add all the totals, we shall get the cost of the building. I hope I'm coming out a bit clear. So, when we are taking off, we will go to measuring the detail by detail. And that's why, um, when we are taking off, mostly we follow a procedure. The same procedure that we follow when we are building, the same procedure we follow when we are taking off to ensure that we capture everything because everything that we is involved in a construction site is going to cost us something even if it's excavating the soil and moving the soil from the site to outside the site this one will cost us money so uh, that's why we shall be able to measure every 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 bit of this uh, process because everything shall cost us money so we want to measure it then we shall apply a certain rate then we shall get the total cost there are those videos that that playlist that we have for unit rates if you want to know how to come up with unit rates or you're in a module 3 class that is what module 3 usually do coming up with unit rates whereby you have to know the cost of materials the cost of labor and the cost of profit and overheads so that you divide it by the total meter squared to get the cost per meter squared just check out our playlist on unit rates for taking off we have a whole playlist for uh, taking off substructure works superstructure works we have staircase we have the roofs we have retaining all the external works check them out in our playlist too. So, in case you want us to discuss it, just like we are discussing it on a board today, anything, maybe you did not understand the roof, 
maybe you did not understand the staircase just write it in the comment section what part did, didn't you understand so that i can come and explain to you uh on the board very clearly so that we can see whether you'll be able to understand and i believe that you're going to understand so uh on today's video uh, i have received so many comments for students uh, saying that I have never understood I have never come to understand why we are taking off kindly introduce us like people who have never to been to our taking off class how we take off substructure works so that is what I am going to explain today so uh, using these simple diagrams I think this is the simplest diagrams that we can get I'm going to take you step by step on the taking off process of a substructure of the substructure works so that you can be able to to understand okay whenever we are taking off a subs the substructure works first of all we shall begin with site clearance we shall begin with site clearance site clearance is whereby uh, we clear the site that you are going to construct in you realize that uh, when we get to a construction site where we are going to build our building the site is not ready for construction we need to clear that site maybe it had old buildings that we need to demolish maybe there were there was grass growing so maybe there were shrubs there were bushes we need to cut down all these trees the grass we remove all of it we remove the other growth we cut down the shrubs okay then then we burn all these arising all of them we shall burn them so uh, instead of uh, costing, it costing us to take them away from the site or anything, we can just choose to burn them. So uh, that's area for site clearance. Site clearance is usually measured in area. How do we measure site clearance? You're given a plan here and you're given a section. The plan shows you how we see the building from above. The length is 10 meters and the width is 5 meters. Okay, then we have a section here. Uh -huh. You can say this is section AA. We have cut the building here and we are viewing it. Once we cut section AA, uh, we shall see uh, something like this. This one is what we shall see uh, the details of the walls from the foundation to the top of the slab. You see, these are the superstructural walls. So, uh, when we are uh, clearing the site, we need to consider what is underground. You see, in the strip foundation, this concrete is wider than the wall. This wall is this wall, that is, we can see here. But this concrete extends outside the walls, okay? So, meaning that in this uh, plan of ours, we have an allowance, we have... Let me draw it like this, an allowance that is given for concrete. There is this broken line. This broken line is for this concrete that you cannot see. Because this concrete is outside the wall. This line is this line. This line of wall this is this line. This line of wall is this inside line. But this broken line is this line of concrete. It's underground. So from above we cannot see it. But we know that uh, once we are excavating, we have to excavate up to here so that you can go and do this concrete. This concrete here is another line that can be represented in a broken line here. Uh -huh. It can be represented in a broken line. Then uh, these two broken lines, they show us this concrete. This concrete is shown to be 600 millimeters. The wall is 200 millimeters. So uh, if we want to know the thickness of this concrete outside the wall and this concrete inside the wall, it shall be 600 minus 200. So this side divided by 2. 200 here and 200 on this other side. So in this uh, plan, 200 is for this outside and this one is 200. This one, we usually call it the foundation spread. This was the wall. It was coming to the foundation. But the foundation is spreading 200 on the inside and 200 on the outside. So that one is called the, the foundation spread. In other books, you find them uh, calling it the working space. Why we have these uh, 200, 200, when we are building this wall, the, the, the fundies, 
the skilled laborers uh -huh, will be standing on this space as they build this wall. So in other books, they can call it the working space. So once we are doing site clearance, we have to consider all the area that the house will occupy, then we shall add that foundation spread or working space. So what shall guide you to know the length of the working space or foundation spread is the section. You will take the total, here is 600, deduct 200, divide by 2, 200, 200, okay? So when you are clearing the site, what will be the dimensions of the length and width? You will just come right, length, width. The length was 10 meters, 10,000 millimeters. The width was 5,000 millimeters, okay? Why I'm writing it in millimeters is because all these workings, we shall do them in the description column. And in the description column, we use, the, um, we use millimeters as our unit. Then when we go to the uh, dimension column, we use meters. Remember, in a taking off sheet, we have these three columns. Uh -huh. These three columns. So once we are coming to taking off, we shall write here, site clearance. Uh huh. No. Okay. In, under site clearance, we just write that. Uh huh. Clear the site of all bushes, of all bushes, shrubs, undergrowth, undergrowth, and burn all arising. Uh huh. Then. Uh, these dimensions we shall be used. We shall do the calculations here in the description column. So it shall be ten thousand, and the width five thousand. Then we shall add the foundation spread, two hundred this side, two hundred this side for the length. So it shall be two times two hundred, four hundred. Then two times two hundred for the width, four hundred. So the total length that we shall clear the side is ten four hundred. And for the one for we shall clear the site is five four hundred for the wind. Okay? Then uh, the here we shall come and write ten point four zero because in the dimension column we usually uh, put them in terms of meters. Ten point four zero and five point four zero for the wind. Alright. Then once you square you'll come and multiply these and times this and you write the answer here. Now something you should note. If you do the calculations under this description, you realize that if in case there's something that share the same measurement with this one, you cannot be able to add it. So that is why we usually do the calculation first, then we write the description. Because uh, in the next step, after clearing the site, we need to remove the vegetable soil. You can see that in, we had been told in the notes, the vegetable soil is average 150 millimeters deep. So we need to remove all vegetable soil. So, and the same area that we do clear the site is the same area we remove the vegetable soil. So that's why we always start with these uh, calculations before we do the description here. So this one, I'm going to erase it because it should not be here, all right? You should do it, the calculations, then the description. So under this description for site clearance, you, uh -huh, in the, you'll come and say in the same area, you just add a, an emphasis here, you will remove all vegetables. So in uh, average depth, uh, 150 millimeters, 150 millimeters deep, and uh, take it 10 meters away from site. Okay, uh, you remember the vegetable soil is that soil that was supporting the vegetation. So that soil usually have a lot of uh, humus it has a lot of air spaces so we cannot use it for construction so that one we just dispose it away from the sites because it is not good soil for construction so uh, the same area that we do the site clearance is the same area that we remove all the vegetable soil so there is no need for writing separately then repeating these dimensions we just write it we add an ampersand we add that one okay after removing the vegetable soil, so that we can get to this level of hard coal, we need to check whether we need to reduce the level. 
how do we check whether we need to reduce the level reducing the level meaning means excavating further to get to the level which hard coal shall be laid you remember hard coal is usually laid on a farm ground what will guide us to tell us whether we shall reduce the level is the section here so what shall we do uh, what we shall do we shall check from the ground level from the ground level to the hard coal this, uh, you see where we have the hard coal. This, lay, this, this one is usually called the formation level. Where the hard coal lies is usually called the formation level. After removal of the vegetation, the vegetable soil, that level that we acquire is called the stripped level. So we have different levels when we are taking off. First of all, we have the ground level. The ground level is that level of ground that we have met on site. We have not done anything to it. That is the ground level. After the ground level, we shall remove all the vegetations and remove all vegetable soil. So, after removing all that vegetable soil, we shall get to the stripped level. I hope it's clear. Then, after the stripped level, we shall excavate further uh -huh, to reduce the level up to where the hard coal shall be laid. That level where the hard coal is usually laid, that farm level, whereby that soil is very firm, it's not loose. Because we only lay hard coal where the soil is very firm. That's fa that level is called the formation level. So let us see. From the ground level to get to the formation level, what is the depth? Okay. How we shall get that is we can take the total thickness here. We take 100 plus 25 plus 250. So we shall take 100 plus 25 plus 250. When we add all these, we shall get... 375 okay then we take 200 plus 900 okay uh-huh okay this one 375 is from here to here if we take from here to here minus from here to ground level we can remain with from ground level to formation level i hope that is clear we are taking this total minus here so we shall get from ground level to here so 375 375 minus 200 from above the ground 375 less 200 which is above the ground we shall remain with 175 so 175 is the depth from the ground level to the formation level and we have removed vegetable soil which is an average depth of set 150 so to get to the formation level having 175 and we have removed 150 mm -hmm, so we shall say 175 less 150 we shall get 25 so we need to reduce the level deeper with 25 millimeters so we shall come here and say and reduce level by 25 millimeters to formation level so all this area that we have done site clearance all this area we shall clear the site all this area, we shall remove the vegetable soil 150 millimeters deep. Then for all that area, we shall reduce the level further by 25 millimeters to get to this level. So the whole site will be on this level even up to here. Because the whole site, it is, includes the foundation spread. Okay? Once we get the whole site to that level, so the neighboring soil, you see, the neighboring soil shall be in this area. This area that you can see here, it shall come and it will form like a depression. So all the sites that we'll do construction on will be on the reduced level or it shall be on the formation level. Now, once we are there, we need now to excavate the trench so that we can come and create space for building these stones. Okay? So after clearing the site, removing the vegetable soil and reducing the level, now we need to come to trench excavation. Okay, so I will erase this so that we can continue using this space that we have. So, uh, on this area now, we need to come and excavate the trench. We shall excavate the trench up to here below so that we can create space for this concrete and the wall. So, we want to know uh, what is this volume of soil that we shall excavate uh, so that we can be able to do the, the, the concrete and the wall. So, trench excavation. 
it's no longer site clearance, it is a trench excavation. Trench, trench excavation. So first of all, for the trench excavation, we want to, to calculate the, the depth of excavation. We are excavating from the formation level to the bottom of the trench. What is this depth? How do we calculate that depth? That depth can, can, can be calculated by taking from here to here, this total height, total depth, we deduct from here to here. Okay? So, from here to here, it shall be 200. We add 900. We add 200. And we shall get, this one is 0, 0, 11, 12, 13. 1300. Uh, millimeters the depth from up here to here then we want to de to deduct from up there to the uh, formation level so we shall add these layers 100 plus 25 plus 250 100 plus 25 plus 250 we shall get 375 so if from here to here is 375 and from here to here is 1300 what is from here to here whereby we shall excavate the trench. So we shall take 1300 with less 375. So this one shall be 5, 9 minus 7, 2, 12 minus 3, 9. So we need to excavate uh, for the trench 925 millimeters. What is that? This way. All this volume of sweep. The height shall be 925. All right, so uh, once we are coming to fill the trench dimensions, we shall take the length of the trench. The length of the trench, you shall find out that this is the trench, this one. So how do we find the length of all that trench? We shall find the center line. How do we find the center line of the trench? The center line of the trench, this one, 600, the center of 600 is 300. Where is 300? This is 200, 200, 200. So 300 is here, the center of the wall. So in this one, the center of the wall, if we draw a line here at the center of the wall, then we go around it, we shall get the center line of the trench. Okay? Okay, that is the center line of the wall, which is the center line of the trench. How do we find this center line of the trench? We shall go back to finding center line. I had already done a video that shows how to find, calculate the center line of a trench. If you haven't seen our video on calculating center lines, it's in our it's in, in, in our videos. Go find out those videos for calculating center lines. Because you'll always require to find the center lines when you're calculating for trench excavation. Okay, so here, what do we do? We said that when you're calculating the center line, we'll take the external dimensions, external perimeter, then we shall deduct the number of corners times the thickness of the trench. For example, the external dimensions here, we say that from here to here it's 10 meters, plus 200, plus 200. So the external dimensions for the foundation spread shall be 10,400. For the wind, it shall be 5, 400 because we have added 200 and 200 this side. So, when you are finding the center line, center line, first of all, you shall take perimeter is equal to 2 into bracket length plus wind. So, it shall be 2 into bracket 10, 400 mm -hmm, plus 5, 400. So, we shall get mm -hmm, 15, 800 times 2. Uh, that you want 600 okay this one 10 400 plus 5 400 that is 15 800 times 2 is that one 600 uh, millimeters so this is the external perimeter to get the center line we just need to deduct number of corners there are four corners one two three four multiplied by the thickness of the trench which is 600 so it shall be 2400. So that you want 600 with less 2400, we shall get 002 31 minus 2, 29. So uh, the center line for this trench will be 29200. The depth of the trench is 925 millimeters. So once we are coming to fill it here, how do we fill it? When we're filling, we always start with the length, the width, then the depth. So the length shall be uh, 
29.20 the width shall be 0 0.6 because we take the center line we multiply by the width of the trench to get the, the area then we multiply by the depth to get the volume so it shall be 0 0.93 this one shall be the volume of soil so you shall write excavate for trench uh-huh uh excavation for trench this is the volume for trench okay from the uh formation level okay uh in excavation for the trench you see here we got 925 millimeters in a certain uh in a different example you could find like it's three meters you're excavating three meters trench excavation in the smm is usually excavated in uh in ranges of 1.5 meters why because after every 1.5 the rate of excavation changes after every 1.5 meters so in case we were excavating like three meters we would excavate the first 1.5 meters separately then the next 1.5 meters separately what do i mean by separately you write the length the width the height the depth shall be 1.5 you write uh, commencing from formation level and not exceeding 1.5 meters deep okay then you come to the next whereby you write the length the width the next 1.5 uh, meters deep commencing from 1.5 meters deep not exceeding 3.0 meters deep if it, it, it there's an excess you will go to the next stage whereby you will take the balance that then you write length width and the balance commencing from 3 meters deep to 4.5 not exceeding 4.5 meters deep i hope that is clear we always excavate trenches in ranges of 1.5 meters deep but for us here in our case it was only 95 millimeters it's not even 1.5 meters deep so that one we have we can write it as length width and depth okay after excavation for the trench the next step is doing the concrete here it's the mass concrete the mass concrete is calculated in terms of area okay so how do we calculate the mass you can calculate it in terms of area or volume actually in the sms we are given an alternative uh, you can just calculate it in terms of area or volume so um what what how do we calculate the area of this concrete or the volume of it you will take the center line of the trench you multiply by the thickness of the concrete for the area if you want the volume you'll take the center line for the trench you multiply by the thickness of the trench then you multiply by the depth of this concrete for example if we were to calculate the area we would say still, still take the center line which is 29.20 we we'll multiply by 0 0.6 then we we'll multiply by 0 0.2 sorry in case it's an area which would take 29.2 then we we'll multiply by 0 0.6 if it's volume, we'll take 29.2, we multiply by 0 0.6, then we multiply by 0 0.2 for the volume of this concrete that is below here. Okay? So that one, sh we shall just write concrete ratio 1 is to 3 is to 6 in foundation strip. After measuring for the concrete, there's something that I forgot to uh, explain to you. After excavating the soil in the trench, after the excavation for the trench, that soil, that heap of soil that we shall excavate, that soil, we will take it to a heap of soil that we call a cutaway. We, in, in a site, we have two heaps of soil. Let me erase this one as I explain to you. Uh, in, a, in a site, we have two heaps of soil. Uh, the two heaps of soil, uh, they are called the cutaway and the refill and ram okay so in a size we have two heaps of soil let me just write them here we have a heap called cutaway and the other one is refill and ram uh in cutaway all the soil that we excavate we usually take it to cutaway we assume to have put that soil in the heap of cutaway this cutaway means we are taking this soil away from the site then there's the other heap of soil that we call the refill and ram. This is the soil that we shall uh, take from cut away because we shall need it to backfill. So whenever you're taking off in our PowerPoint, you may find terms like cut away and refill and ram. Where are they coming from? 
when we once we excavate the trenches we say that all that soil we will add it to cut away after excavation 